Psalms 89. Mashiel of Ethan to Ezra. Mashiel is instruction to learn. And this psalm is about David, the tender mercies of God to him. And I don't think we're going to get the whole chapter done tonight. Uh, maybe we will. But we'll see what the Lord has as we go about lamb food. They got the I am's for dog food. We got the I am, the Lord Jesus Christ, our shepherd. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. That's a way to praise God. Sing. Sing what? Sing about me, myself, and I? No, sing in the mercies of God. Praise God for everything he's done for you. He's to be the option of your worship and your praise, not self, not gratification. With my mouth will I make known thy, thy faithfulness to all generations. You are to give a testimony of God and everything he does to you. Every born-again Baptist church should have a time, at least once a month, of testimonies. And then when you have that testimony times, as I've been in churches that have that, you always get one person will get up and they'll say, I, 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 I. That's not what it's about. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about God. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Mercy goes on to eternity. It is still of God's mercy that you'll be in New Jerusalem. Or the new earth for the Jews. There is no mercy in hell. Ask the guy in Luke 16. He doesn't even have a name. We're given a new name. Thy, that's God's faithfulness, shalt thou, that's God, establish in the very heavens. Notice that's plural. There's not a seventh heaven. There's three heavens. You can. We're going to see in this chapter. You can look to the, to the, to space. You can look to the, what you can see with a naked eye, and you can see that God's faithful. When's the last time you heard in this solar system two planets collide? Realize if the moon were to take off, we'd be dead. So God's being faithful to us. He's being faithful to his word that the Christians won't be taken out until the rapture. This world will not be destroyed. I don't care what they teach you in the movies. This world will not be destroyed until God says it's ready to be put into fire. They have these movies, oh, we're going to be with a, with a flood. No, that already happened. And God already said that when you put the rainbow in the sky, not for sodomites, but for a promise to say, I will never drown out the entire world. God is too faithful. Here we are in 2014. If it rained somewhere and the rainbow showed up, God still sees that. He still looks upon Noah and the animal and said, I will never drown it all out again. That's a faithful God. When you look up at the sun, moon, and the stars, where the Genesis chapter 2 says God put them for seasons. That's a faithful God. You can't be a farmer and not believe in God. You can't be a fisherman and not believe in God unless you've been educated out of it. God is faithful. I, God, have made a covenant, and that's a league. That's a joining together with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. So God made a covenant, a special covenant, a, a league with David. He said, well, David murdered and David killed somebody. Yeah, so? Haven't you ever thought about killing somebody? God will charge murder to you just as much as you thought about it than doing it. God had mercy on David because God knew David's heart. Well, God shouldn't forgive him. Look what he did to King Saul. Look what he done to other people in the Bible. He didn't forgive uh, uh, Cain. Yeah, but God knew the heart. Even though David doing the adultery and murder, he loved the Lord. And he wanted to do right. Thy seed, talking to David, will I, God, establish forever. 
You know who's going to be in the millennium? David's going to be the prince. He's going to see all those boys of his, his grandchildren, that did right. And he's going to live with them forever. You know Solomon was saved? God told David that that is my son. And it, as my son, if he does wrong, I'm going to whip him. I'm going to chastise him. You can't undo a sonship, even though Solomon went after other gods and all that. God did exactly what he told him to do. He, he sent two, three men after him as chastisement. David's going to see Solomon. Solomon's going to see his children. And David's going to see his grandchildren. David will see his great-great-grandmother Ruth. And Boaz, his grandfather. And build up thy throne, David's throne, to all generations. Selah, where does David sit? Where does that Selah go? That goes to the millennium when Jesus Christ sits on David's throne. Now that Selah is a rest in music. Wouldn't that be a great rest when Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne of David and David's the prince? The Bible says a, a child shall lead the wild animal. Imagine a mother looking out a window doing the dishes. Here's her son with a grizzly bear. <gasps> oh, wait a minute. forgot. We're in, a new, we're in a new dispensation. You sure couldn't do that with a grizzly bear today. All the heavens shall praise thy wonders. How are the heavens going to praise thy wonders? That would be interesting. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Oh, we'll look at that word in a minute. It's an interesting word, saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Well, some have pictures of them. But the Bible says that's not right. Some will raise men up on a throne in, in, in a holy baloney. That's not God. Even though he wears a title that describes as God, that's not God. Who are you going to pair, compare God to in all? Who else is a creator? Who else is such a great scientist that he can take two elements that burn and put them together and put fire out? Hydrogen and oxygen. Compass three of those elements and put together, you get water. Who can do that? Well, scientists can do Yeah. Well, let's see the scientists come up with the chemicals from scratch. Uh-huh. Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? One angel destroyed an entire army. Let's see you do that. One man destroyed almost a whole area of the Philistines with two arms. That was given to him by God. Let's see you do that. God destroyed an entire nation, the Bible says, in Egypt. Let's see you do that. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. You mean dead people? Because there's a church out there that teaches saints because they just carnal, carbonize or carnalize something. I don't know. Two popes today as saints. They're dead. How does a dead man fear God? Greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. You mean the saints today in the church when they talk about the Super Bowl, basketball, and anything else, they fear God? They're not worried that maybe God will come at that moment when they're in church and they're fooling around? God is not feared in the assembly of the saints today. Not with the nonsense that's going on in the church and in the assemblies. You mean to tell me you're going to have a carnival and, and you fear God? 
You mean to tell me you're you're going to play uh, uh, midget uh, rock and roll under the name of country music and you fear God? You mean to tell me you're going to come up with easy believism and you're going to tell me you fear God? You mean to tell me that I'm going to pass rumors about one Christian from church to church to church and I and there's a there's a fear of God in, in the assembly? And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. The only reverence you see in the Bible is not man, it's God. A man that has a reverence before his name is stealing the title and the action because that's a verb of God. Reverend so and so. I'm not going to reverence you, I'm going to reverence God. You mean to tell me he's to be had reverence of them that are about him? With the with the with the with the, the the subject of saints, you mean God gets the glory when you get up there talk about yourself and your stories and your life? You mean he's to be reverent when you get up about your ball team that you're rooting for and what you like and and what you did and. Reverence is, is the testimony is given to all the credit of God. O Lord God of hosts. That host is all that he's made. All the angels. All the seraphims. All the cherubim. The, the 24 elders. When they show up. Whenever they show up. All the saints. Who is strong. Wait a minute. Who is a strong Lord like unto thee? What God is there that conquered death? Even Michael the archangel did not put false applications against Lucifer, Satan, the devil. In the name of the Lord, he went. There are preachers out there, oh, I'm going to shoot the old smutty face with a water gun. Or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Who is more faithful than God? The word divorce itself shows that man is not faithful. Murder shows that man is not faithful. Leaving a baby off to die or even who has died shows that man is not faithful. When Jesus said, when a man looketh upon a woman, the lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her, that shows man is not faithful. A lie is not faithful. To steal from someone who uh, of their stuff is not faithful. Now, do you know a God who has not committed adultery, who has not lied, who has not stolen anything, and is com completely honorable and reverent and you cannot say that about no man. Thou God ruleth the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof rise, thou stillest them. Anybody recognize that story? Matthew eight, twenty six, Psalms eighty nine nine. Of course, 899. That's what I'm looking at right now. I don't know why I put that. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in the boat. Mr. Jehovah Witness, can we read now, please? Go back to verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, God, who is strong, Lord, like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee, thou, 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 God, thou, God, thou, God, God, thou, thou, God, God, thou. God, thou. Rule is the raging sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 8. Run back to verse 8. There's God. God is Jesus, and Jesus Christ is God. So take your Jehovah Witnesses and belief and go. And then go to the sewer plant. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, and you cannot deny that. And thou, that points back to God.
Flush it. And that is in the Old Testament. To say that Jesus Christ is not God and God is not Jesus Christ is to pervert Scripture. I want what their Bible says. I'm not interested. I want what their Bible says. Thou, thou, the one that broke the raging waters, the ones that stood up and said, Peace! Be still. Thou has broken Rahab, that's Egypt, in pieces. Oh, you mean the you mean the God that destroyed Egypt was also the God that controlled the the, the the waves when he was alive on this planet as human and the God of hosts? You mean Jesus did that to, to, in the book of Exodus? Uh-huh. 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 And when God said, I will at midnight go through Egypt, and when I see the blood, I will that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou has broken Rahab. Thou matches back to verse 9, which goes back to verse 8. Jesus Christ, who is God. As one that is slain, thou hast scattered thy enemies with thy strong arm. Wait till Jesus Christ tells you, depart from me in an everlasting fire. What are, you go what are you going to do to fight Jesus when he tells you to go to hell? What can you do to prevent Jesus from calling you and putting you into the lake of fire? What can you do? What strength will you have? The heavens are thine. That's not what NASA thinks. NASA thinks we have the right to go populate the moon, go populate Mars. <coughs> Excuse me. Who gave you that right? Who gives you the right to go put junk around this earth? All that space crap out there. Who gave you that right? You can't pick up your own garbage. What are you putting laws about me and my garbage for? Who gave you the right to land on the moon? Which I don't believe you did. That's my own personal belief. Who gave you the right to put the rovers in all those little, those little uh, remote control vehicles on Mars? Who gave you that right? Who gave you the right to put those telescopes in outer space? Who gave you that right? And the fact is you're using it to disprove the creation, to prove the evolution. What gave you that right? As for the world and the fullness thereof, Thou hast founded them. God created it all. Stop wasting my tax money and trying to disprove what God. And by the way, you're going to have to give an account for every dollar you spent for trying to disprove him. All that money for the space program, do you think it maybe could pay for health care for Americans to get what they need? You think that? Maybe, 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 maybe? And you waste it? A waste of money. God said I did it. Just because you don't want to believe the book. The north and the south, thou hast created them. What is the north and what is the south? God created them. Tabor and Hermon, mountains, places, shall rejoice in thy name. A mountain's going to rejoice? How does a mountain, uh, we just read before, it said the heavens are going to rejoice. Come on, you, you watched cartoons, didn't you? Didn't you see happy trees and, and, and animals that talked and... And you know the, the the sun with a with a with a face and the moon with a haven't you seen all that stuff? Where did they get all that stuff from? Satan knows something about the book. The Bible says somewhere I'm not sure, but it says the trees are going to clap their hands. I believe that literally. I mean, if Wizard of Oz can have the trees throw apples at Dorothy, I think I think God's trees can clap at His presence. 
Oh, you're foolish for believing that. We'll see. I could be wrong, maybe. I'm just reading in the Bible. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand. And high is thy right hand, the Lord Jesus Christ, as we said. What power that Jesus has. Justice and judgment are in the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Justice, judgment, mercy, and truth proceed from God. Justice. You can pay a judge and pervert justice. Judgment. It takes so long for, for the justice system to work in America, a man may die before he gets his judgment. Truth? You mean the media? You're going to speak about truth? You're talking about all the churches that have spoken throughout the world, from north to south, from east to west. There was pure truth? I don't believe it. Mercy. You think there's concentration camps out there? You think there are people out right now crying out for mercy? You think there are Christians in, in Islam nations that are crying out for mercy and not getting it? You think people in China, some Chinese or some of the people calling out for mercy and not getting it? You need the great white throne judgment. You need the judgment seat of Christ for judgment, justice, judgment, and mercy and truth. Because you sure ain't getting it in the churches and from the pulpits. God will straighten it all out. God will tell you who's right and wrong. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. The joyful sound that Jesus saves. Or the joyful sound because he ran a stupid pigskin across a, a, a line on the ground. Or because he had joyful sound because he caught a ball with a glove. Or the joyful sound of a, of a motorboat engine going out in the middle of a lake. What is your joyful sound? Mine's to hear a trumpet. The blessed hope. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Do you walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ? John says, I am not that light. Capital L. The light of God's countenance is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, He that seeth me has seen the Father. Oh! In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength. Listen, I, I finish a day at work not because of who I am, but because of my prayers and God answers my prayers. I get the end of the day at work and it's like, Lord, how the heck did that happen? Only you could have done that. And then it was time for bed. Lord, how, this whole day was, wow, how did I get through that? It's God's strength. The strength that he gave me like salvation. Salvation is not mine. It's his salvation. And in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Now horn is a power and authority. That's what goats and all that use to battle one another. And the one that wins gets whatever the territorial or the female. It was also a thing used to carry the anointing oil that anointed the priests, the high priests, and the kings. For the Lord is our defense. You really believe that for America? You think, you know, if any of our armed 
service personnel are sent over to the Middle East, they can't take their Bibles. If a if a soldier's in Iraq, you can't send them tracks. What is our defense, Christian? Ephesians 6? Does that sound familiar? Do you know what Ephesians 6 says? That is your defense and your offense. I'll leave you to read Ephesians 6 on your own. I hate to do all the work for you. I don't want you to be a lazy Christian. I want you to find the books in the Bible on your own. You gotta do some work, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine in the word of truth. I'll leave you to go find Ephesians 6 and read what the defense is. And the Holy One of Israel is our King. Not when they came to Samuel. Give us a king like all the nations. They don't even have a king today. Now, when this was written. Israel does not have a king today. The next king they will have will be the Lord Jesus Christ, capital K, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Then thou speakest in vision to the holy to thy holy one, and says, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen of the people. Who? I have found David. My servant. Let me ask you a question, Christian. Can God call you his servant? Now, I know you can't be 100%. Even my own life, God has told me, give somebody a, or say something, whatever, to somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ, and I backed out. I was unfaithful servant. But there are times that when God can call upon, need someone to do something, and he calls upon you, are you his servant? David wasn't 100%. We've already talked about that. Read where God has called my servant. He called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him to be king. You know, David was also a priest. He ate the showbread. And he was a prophet. Are you anointed by God through the Holy Spirit and be, being born again? With whom my hand, God's hand, shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. That's the sure mercies of David. That's the promise that God promised to David. The throne that the Lord Jesus Christ will sit on. The enemy shall not extract, exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. The son of wickedness? Antichrist, son of perdition, First Thessalonians, I think it's three. The Antichrist is not going to get total victory over David's seed of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or the 12 tribes. He's going to get some, but he's not going to get all. I will beat down his foes before his face, the second advent, and plague them that hate him. Pla plagues, trumpets, seals, three woes, vials. David's dead. He didn't do that to Saul. Saul wasn't plagued. Saul lived a long, happy life, was killed in battle. 
He tried to kill David countless times. He sent a whole army after David. Not not tens, not hundreds, but thousands. David must have been a real mighty man if Saul sent a thousand men to go get David. You ever think about that? How much how many men he sent into a complete army against a man who was on God's side? <clears throat> Don't worry about what Satan can do to you. If God is on your side and you're doing what God wants you to do. But my faithfulness, God's faithfulness, and my mercy, God's mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. So he's going to sit with Jesus Christ the king as prince. How about that? How about the fact is, as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, how many churches today do not teach about David and Goliath that those who serve the Lord and do right, you're going to be able to go up to David in the millennium and shake his hand. How would you like to hear the testimony of David telling us about the story with Goliath himself? Isn't that, aren't we just told, then weren't we told tonight so far, you're to tell the testimony of the Lord? Can you imagine God just calling everybody together? Okay, here's David. He's going to tell about his battle with Goliath. And he gave the battle, he gave all the glory to who? He gave it to God. Imagine David telling you about the story. Be a lot better than hearing other stupid stories. I want to hear Bible stories. I want to hear about the Bible. I want to hear from saints. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. I don't know. He shall cry unto me, God, thou, God, art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. David is forever going to give God the glory. Give God the credit forever. Um, should we stop or we're halfway through? It's a terrible place to stop. Let's keep going. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. Now, this covenant of David reaches far, far into the, into the millennium and into eternity. The Lord Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and David's throne. Christ is going to sit on the throne of David, the throne of all thrones. Even Lucifer, Lucifer's throne, even Satan's throne, read in Revelation, he has a throne, is going to be cast down and Jesus... Jesus Christ, the David's throne, is the last throne on this kingdom called earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him all the way past the millennium into the eternal. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Forever. David's going to sit with his seed, those that did right, and I believe that Jews and the Gentiles and the, and the eternity are going to give birth to children. Read about when they can come in and take the tree of life and the water of life. That's a long story. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, and they did, the ones on the earth, go back and read those kings. The ones that say, and they did not write in the Lord, in the ways of the Lord as David their father did. Did you never know this? I would say, as David their father? You, you catch that. If they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit them with transgression with the rod? Did God do that? And their iniquity with stripes, did God do that? One of them had his eyeballs taken out as he watched his sons die. Do 
Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail from him, David. No matter what his children do, David has got a sure foundation. Just as much as we do. No matter what our children do, we've got a sure foundation. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips, the word of God. God will not change a covenant. God will not change a promise. God cannot change. He is bound by his lips. If he says you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. If he says you need to be born again, guess what? Jesus said, I am the way. He is God. We read that. And being God, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Guess what? Once I have sworn by my holiness... That I will not lie unto David. God cannot lie. When he made this, this, this covenant, this league with David, God said, I swear by myself. Imagine God walking in a courtroom for David. and You got a Bible? I am the Bible. Okay, I am. You got that? You read John 1.1 1, 1 about the Bible, about the word. And God says, and they say, God, do you swear to tell the truth? So all the truth and nothing but the truth? That's me. Now what are you going to say? I'm going to give David sure mercies. Now watch this covenant. His seed shall endure forever. His children. His throne as the sun before me. Well, there's no throne now. Yeah, there's a little, a little period where it's gone. But it's going to come back. It's not going to stop. Christ has earned that throne. But as David fled from Saul, as David was not sitting on the throne, even though he was anointed king of Israel and King Saul was on the throne, King David being like Jesus Christ and King Saul being, being Satan, a type of, Jesus Christ is on the throne right now while Satan is ruling. Now, Jesus is not running. He's just sitting back. Waiting for the victorious day when he sits on that throne. He shall endure forever in his throne as the sun before me. You know the sun's going to go away. But that throne won't. David's throne will last more than the sun. It shall be established forever as the moon. You say the moon doesn't last forever. Yes, it does. Once all the earth and all that disappears. You know, one of those scientists say that you can't absolutely get rid of any, anything. Even smoke is still something somewhere. But a lifetime would be forever, isn't it? Not eternal. Didn't say eternal. It said forever. David's throne is going to be eternal. As a faithful witness in heaven. What's going to be a faithful witness? David's throne. Every time you look at David's throne, it's going to remind you of the promise. Like that rainbow reminds God of the, I'm not going to drown out the whole flood. Or the whole world with the flood. But thou hast cast off, and the whore, that means extreme hatred. Thou hast been wroth with thy anointed. And we read that through all the kings. We read that through Samuel. We read that through the Chronicles. Those kings, most of them did not do right. Not one king in Israel ever did right. Go back and check them. They all followed the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel a sin. You notice how many times that showed up? Like a Catholic church. They just keep undoing after generation, after generation. And read what the Bible says about the generations, about the second commandment. In Exodus 20. Thou has made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou has profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Where is the king of Israel today? 
There is none. Why? Because they rejected. There was no king in Israel when Babylon was. God gave them a second chance with Ezra and Nehemiah. They blew it with the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if that's where they get that musical group casting crowns. When the Jewish kingdom of, of David falls and doesn't get back up into the Lord Jesus Christ. That'd be interesting. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Hedges are, are that's mine. That's yours. And I can get some fruit off. If it's a fruit blue hedge, I can get some stuff off. It. It's a protection. It keeps the animals out of the vineyard, the Bible says. The wild beasts. From eating the, the, the grapes and the figs or whatever you got protecting. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. Well, go look over Jerusalem today. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Jews is a joke. Catholics are over there running the nation today. Showing you lies and making money. This is where Christ died. You didn't read Hebrews 13, Mr. Catholic. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies rejoice. Because they did not do what God. This is rebellion against God. This is the, the history of the Jewish nation. Go back and read Kings and Chronicles. Thou hast turned. Read the prophets Jer Isaiah. And Jeremiah, thou hast turned the edge of the sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Death by war. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. There is no throne in Jerusalem today. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. They die early. Thou hast, cover, thou hast covered him with shame. Shelah, the, the tribulation period. Imagine casting the throne down as Satan sits on it. What a great casting down. Casting crowns. Rock music. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Because they did not honor their parents. That's a Bible principle that's followed in the New Testament. You don't love your parents. You don't treat them right. You don't live a long life. How long, Lord? Will thou hide thyself forever? No. Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Fire destroys completely. Unless it's ashes. No, the Lord Jesus Christ will come back and get that raiment. Remember how short my time is. My time. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? For all have sinned come to show the glory of God. God didn't make them like that. They fell. Genesis 3. God did not make man vain. What is man that they're mindful of? God looked upon man and said, I, I, I got to do something for him. See, he's blaming God. God, why would you do this? Why do, why do people die? Why do earthquakes? God didn't do it. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Elijah, Enoch, and any Christian that's alive when the rapture could happen. How about that? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Tribulation. Moses and Elijah are raptured out. Those Jews that are down in Salem Peach are where they run to. They're given a death sentence. That's why they're running. Make wonder how many of those that die on the way that... The Lord will call still. Because if they're running from the Antichrist, that's what Jesus told them to do. Flee. Don't go back. Remember Lot's wife? Wouldn't it be great as those that die on their way to the wilderness, Jesus comes back on horseback, comes to St. Peach, picks up those that are alive and remain. And he starts picking up the ones that died on the way. They did do what Jesus told them to do, you know. He said, run. A reverse of the, of the Christian rapture? Wouldn't that be interesting? Now, you don't have to take that, what I just said. I mean, that's just that's just thinking. That, that's something me. Okay, where am I? 
Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth? And uh, we'll jump down to 49 for time. Lord, where are thy former loving kindness? It left. Because they rebelled. Which thou swearest unto David in thy truth. You rebelled against God. And when he says when you rebel against God, when he told Solomon, when you do wrong, I'm going to chastise you with whips. I'm going to chastise you. You don't get a blessing when you're when you're rebelling against God. Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy, thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thy enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thy anointed. They're getting after the Lord's people because the Lord's people rebelled against God. They're like, huh? Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. God will get that Jew. God will take care of that Jew. God has promised that Jew. God has promised David. They will get a happy ending. But right now, while the earth, and while there's minutes, seconds, and hours, weeks, days, and years, if you rebel against God, you're going to pay the penalty. No man that rebels against God will get away with it. He said, well, I know people that have not received Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they have a hunky-dunky, wonderful, richly life. Great white stone judgment. Well, I know Christians, and they, you know, they're saved, and they... Judgment seat of Christ. And after each judgment, God will be forever and ever. Amen and amen. We close. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou